Hello, it's me. Right, enough of the intros. Doing the arm, so I'm going to start on this side where this is. And try and get the right bit because I keep selecting the wrong one. There we go. Hide unselected. Okay, and this is our kind of starting point for where the arm's going to come out from. Now, I'm going to hit F4. Obviously, this is quite, well, quite very high polygon, but don't worry about that. Now, I've been looking at the design and the shape of this and trying to decide the best way of doing it. And the best way of doing it is, well, the way I'm about to do it, to be honest. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sphere. And I'm just going to drag my sphere here. I don't want a queer sphere. <laughs> Man, I can keep going on this forever. Okay, and I'm going to hit F3 so I can see through my model a bit. Okay, hit F3, perspective, zoom out. Uh, that's the weirdest thing, isn't it? It's just like I dragged it out of size and it was the right size first time. That doesn't normally happen, which makes me suspicious. Anyway, 0.5 on the hemisphere. And then right click, convert it to editable polygon. And because it's not in the right position, I'll just do a 180 degree like that. And then bring it this way. Okay, now I want to be careful because the whole point of this is if I press angle snap and then use the rotate tool, that you can have a lot of kind of rotation coming in from this. Okay, so the ball joint gives it an awful lot of movement. Um, now, I'm going to take this, go into polygon mode, or thereabouts, and what I want to do is start removing these. So I'm just going to use my select tool. I can't really do a ring select unfortunately and if I delete that well actually no sod it it works I'll just delete that bear with me the coffee hasn't co soaked in yet that was a delete by the way now I'm just going to hit cap and the reason I've done that is because I want this nice looking surface just here okay now I'm going to go straight into a bevel I want a nice strong beveled edge here. I'm going to bring it in to about there. And then go to my left viewport and zoom. And I can use my cut tool from this point. So I'm just going to come out of there, find my cut tool. And there's a specific shape I want. So I'm going to come across from here. Bear in mind that we can't do any subdivision on this really. So that ain't gonna work. From there to there. So I've started with a fairly high poly shape as it stands. I mean we can separate some parts off to make them high poly, but that's about it. Right now from here, down here, here, again down here. Someone was asking me yesterday on the Facebook um, page, you know, do I tend to sketch out pieces? Only if they're very complicated mechanical pieces will I sketch them out, um, simply so that I can make sure that they're not going to intersect or do things that I don't want them to. Most of the time I can kind of work it out now, kind of in my head, but that's only because I've been doing this for quite a while. Um, if you're not sure, then, you know, do what you have to do. There's no shame in taking a bit longer to do something. Okay, uh, just these two bits here. And what I'm going to do is extrude them up. Remember what I did before, I'm extruding them by the same width as that is distance, yeah? So, there we go. And then take off these two. Actually, before I do, Here's a fun little thing. Let's just make sure it's flat on the x-axis. 
a sip of coffee while I'm doing it. The actual mechanical design for this is really, really simple, by the way, which is a pain because I don't really like simple too much. I like effective, so we'll see what we can come up with to make this uh, a bit more good as we go along. Luckily for you, you see, you'll have the references from the finished model, so... I'm one of those days, man. Hang on. I need to go back again. Right, delete. Select that and that. Hinge image. So I'm going to pick my hinge. Have it 180. As I couldn't actually see what it was. There we go. The hinge was correct. Now, fourteen should be enough. Click tick. Click delete. Click, click tick trick. Disease goodness. Okay, and then I'm going to weld. So Control A, Control A on vertex, and then hit the weld button, and I'll get rid of any excess ones that I don't want. Now, clean the model up a little bit if I can. Let's just have a look at it. So I'm going to double click this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. And we'll go here, and here, and here, and here, and turn it around. Look at it from underneath. I'm afraid I'm not using the key viewer because I've got this nagging suspicion it's been crashing my 3DS Max. Okay, now I want to chamfer these. Now, depending on how much you want to chamfer them. So you can have a little bit of a chamfer, like that. Or, you know, we could have a bit more of a chamfer, like that. Or we could just add a, another little teeny chamfer just in there, like that. I think I'll just leave two on. It'll be less messy that way. Alright, and what I'm going to do next is I need to grab one of these and I can use this to start building um, the next part that I need. So, what I'm going to do is, man there's a lot of thinking involved in this one, which is hard man thinking and stuff, you know. Don't be doing that. Right, so I'm going to get this shape here and grab that. Grab a bit on the bottom as well. Make sure I've just got these bits. I'm going to hold shift and just rotate them around. 180 degrees. No, then that was no good. They didn't have angle snap on anymore, so shift and drag. And this is to a new object. Okay, so this comes in here. And what I'm going to do is effect pivot only, center to object, effect pivot only off. Go to my top viewport. And see where that line is there? That should be an actual center of the pivot. Nice and close. See if I keep zooming in, I can see where I'm like slightly off. I'll just fix it. There we go. You see now, I zoom right out again. That's in the right place. Hooray! Okay, now I go across to here. That's the middle. And in top view on this, rather than um, adjusting the width using scale tools, what I'm going to do is just grab each side and bring it out until it touches. So that's one, and then one here. Okay, 
like that. Okay, perspective and zoom. So that gives us that shape. Now it's not in the right place yet. So I'm going to my front viewport. there. Okay, because what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to actually do the entire arm in one fell sweep, just as a kind of my first low detail pass. And if I do that all the way down to the connector where the weapon's going to go, then it's going to be a lot easier, because the arm isn't very complicated or very big. It's actually quite a small piece. Right. Now, I'm not going to bend it down just yet, so what I'm going to do is get my top viewport. And because I like this shape, I'm going to copy that up to there. And then I'm going to copy this down to here. Because I like the idea that the arm's being given a kind of certain level of beefiness. And also, by building all the parts together like this, I can be sure that I know which bits are going to be, you know, not needing detail really. It's kind of helpful. So if you look in width and it's matching up to there. So for example, I'll know not to put rivets down the side of this because it's got that on it. Okay, now down here. I'll just get them to kind of line up. You only can use the grid. Looking okay. Orthographic perspective. Right. I'm going on this and I'm going to attach that part and that part. Okay, so now I've still got my main central pivot just there. Now, what I'm going to do with these is I'm not going to cap them, I don't think. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them to a piece. So I'm going to get a cylinder and I just need a good place to draw it out from. This will probably do actually. Yeah, that's not even remotely straight. Uh, and a second cylinder. draw one out and I'm just going to align it to this so it's in the right place. Okay, now I don't want to make it too big and you'll notice I haven't bothered adjusting it since the last piece I made which was in the previous tutorial set. So I'm just going to bring that out to where it starts to intersect. It's important that I get this intersection area here actually pretty much spot on. I'll adjust it again because I'm going to have to scale some of the parts anyway soon. <laughs> okay, now here I can adjust the radius and the sides. So 24 sides makes it a lot smoother. 32 will make it even smoother still, so I have 32. Now I'll just bring the radius in and have a look at that. That's pretty good. I quite like that. I like the way the shapes are kind of blending as well. So, okay, I'm gonna move this out. I'm gonna get these, and let's get all three borders. Use my scale tool. Scale them in like that. Now if I go over here, and as I said before, I want to get these lines kind of lined up with each other. Oh, 
power of zoom, baby. Hail to the king. So that we can get lovely and close. So I can get it. Right. Up. There we go. See. Zoom out. Go back in perspective and zoom. Okay. Now. Now this here yarn is. Okay, right click, convert to, because I can adjust it anyway in a minute. And now I can take this bit out. Like that. And we go here and attach uh, this bit here. Yep, I can do that. And then I need to work on getting these nice and f the right shape, not flat really. So I'm going to go in here to extrude that a little bit that's all I need to do now over here if I just go to the inside I'm just trying to find a useful place to like work on this because it's can get a little bit tricky I'm gonna go to bridge mode have some coffee while it auto saves Still auto saving. Yeah, dear. Right, bridge, 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 bridge. There we go. So bridge. Uh, no. Right. Bridge tool. And then over here. You know if your bridge doesn't work because it won't work. It's about as good a description as you're gonna get, I'm afraid. Right. Over here. I like how the lines just slowly appear like that. One of those things I quite like about the new version of Max actually. There's not much of a gap in there, unfortunately, so I think what I'm going to do is select this. And then if I go to my, um, I think it's my selection tool, could be modeling, I need to do a loop. Not too much, but I just want to get away from that edge there, you see? It was a little bit too close. Now, on my border tool, I can border here. And I can border here and cap. Okay, so that's now a solid piece. And for the sakes of chamfers. Ooh, for the love of chamfer. I can now go around these very slowly, because obviously, you know, fortunately, it's a bit of a messy way of doing things, but it's effective. Sometimes as well it's easier just to select everything and then deselect it, the parts you don't want, but not this time. As you can see, there's quite a few of them need to be selected, unfortunately. So just take your time. I'm not going to pause because it's not my way. I only have to pause if there's a really long render on. And once I was doing a tutorial, and I was like, ah, this render will be finished any time soon now. And it, like, the render took 22 minutes. And I was like, having to talk for those 22 minutes was horrible. It wasn't horrible, it's just like, you know. I've been doing it, and I was convinced that the render was going to finish any time, and it wasn't. I think it's a multi -pass, multiple passes job, and um, so I was like, I'm not going to pause. I'll just let the render go whilst I was recording. And then it was like five minutes in, and it's like uh, I could pause a bit. We're five minutes in now, and we're having such a lovely conversation. And then it was like 
10 minutes in, it's like, wow, this is still going. If I pause it now, it's going to look silly. And I've been talking so much about what we were going to be doing in the next parts and stuff that I couldn't really just stop it, so... Been using the new 3DS Max Beta. I can't tell you anything about it, even though chances are, you know, some people who are watching this part might be uh, using the new version of 3DS Max, which the beta is of, which I believe is 3DS Max 2017. But uh, if it comes out the way it's currently going, it'd be a heck of a release, to be honest. The last few releases haven't been much of anything, but. Uh, it really does look pretty nice. I can't obviously go into details because I'm constrained by an NDA. A very serious looking NDA as well, so... Autodesk has placed a lot of faith in me, bless them. Anyway, chamfer... Let's do that, we only need one. Okay, and that attaches it onto there. Let's go around it. Have a quick look, yep, yeah, that is groovy. <laughs> as no one in the universe ever says, ever. Okay then, now, let's come down to here. And... I think what I'm going to do is... just refine this shape a little bit, so... Let's have a look. It's not supposed to be a very long arm. Let auto save kicking again, because it's determined to do this every five minutes. And I'm determined not to stop it. Because frankly, if it stops my model being completely destroyed, then I'm not going to complain. Right, go to here. Bevel. Like that. And then give it some length. Bring this out. And then in again. That's all I need to do for that part. Now what I'm going to do is create a cylinder off this. So cylinder. And I'm going to align it. bring it out so it's on top of this. Then I'm going to change the radius. There we go. Convert to editable polygon. And Grab this and bring it in. Just use my scale tool. Okay, I'll bring it up to there. And let's have a look at the shapes I'm using. I'm going to extrude it like that. And then in like that again. That was just a bevel, an extrude, wasn't it? I want a bevel. And we're just going to try and get the shape that I need here. I think we'll use a false piston edge. All I'm doing is just building this shape like that. I don't want to build it out narrow, so there. Like that. And that looks about the right kind of length, really, for what I need. So, what I'm going to build on top of this is another kind of clasp part. 
and clasps. I'm probably going to need. Let's have a look. I think what I'll do is I shall grab at this bit and this bit. I need one though, so shift and drag. Clone to an object. Over. So I just need to affect pivot only. Like that. And we'll bring it to about there. And then this one to about there. Attach the two together and zoom in on them. Okay, and now this will allow me to basically check the widths I've got here, see how they're doing. This one could do with coming down a bit. And creating all these pieces is just one bit, you see, it does make our job considerably easier. Right. Now we've got to find a way of getting these onto that, which is our uh, which is our clamp basically. And there is a way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is move both these forward, like so. And I'm going to grab both the rings at the end. Hold Shift. Just bring them down together like that. See? Okay. Now I can cap them. And I'll come back to that cap in just a moment. Now, over here, there these are, I'm going to grab this and this, and I can't just grab those two, I've got to grab these ones as well. Just use the select tool, rather than select and move, remember. It's amazing how long it took me to realise there was a select, just a select tool rather than select and move. Let me use match about a year. I never used um, the DOS version. 3D Studio, I only ever used 3ds Max, but uh, yeah, that was a weird thing. Okay, bridge. See, so that creates that nice piece there. Now, at the back, where we want a nice bevel. Give it just a moment. I'm just going to clean this up. Another five minutes. I probably should change the auto save to ten minutes at some point. I'll probably go in there and change it. I'm a little bit wary of doing so though, because I know how easy it is for me to kind of have my model destroyed. So. Especially when you're working with very high polygon, because it takes a lot longer to recreate all the stuff that you've ruined. Grow. There we go. Right, delete. Border. Cap. And then with these borders. Chamfer. Not too much though, because you can see there's some funky little errors there. We've got to be careful not to do too many. That should be enough, just to add a little rim to it. Now then, this is obviously too wide here, so what I can do is grab this. And let me see, if I just get this end piece and grow it. What I can do is I can shrink it down using the scale tool while viewing from the left. Okay, that was uh, not what I had in mind. Okay, that's inside it, so that's cool. In perspective and zoom. Now what I'm going to do, connect these two parts here together. So over to here, delete the back polygon, and then if I take this, I'm going to attach this to it, now my pivots are correct, and now uh, if I just look, I should be able to get, there we go, edges, go to bridge mode, Uh, did 
did I not take off? No, it didn't. Didn't take off the back polygon. I wonder why it wasn't working. There we go. Right, back into bridge mode again. Yeah, you can't bridge it if you've got closed polygon. You can only bridge an open polygon. I could literally cap it from this point, but I don't think I really want to. Oh, I see, I keep clicking the wrong bloody one. But there you go. That's the problem, they're close together. It's quite hard being precise. And I tend to try and put as many polygons in before I do this as possible, just in case I get any warping. Okay, let's have a look. As you can see, there's <laughs> going to be a little bit of warping here because it wasn't actually very close to it. I forgot to bring it in. I've been listening to that bloody Shia LaBeouf song all day, by the way, so that's stuck in my head. I don't know if you've seen it or not, it's uh, you know, an operatic rendition of Shia LaBeouf stalking someone through a forest, which is possibly one of the greatest and silliest things I've listened to in a long time. It was very enjoyable. Okay, that and that, and just cap it. Okay, so we've got the chambers on the top. Now, for the bottom part here, there's a couple of things we can do actually. If you, you know, I'm going to be selecting this and want to chamfer it around. We can either select these and chamfer them. Um, if we do a loop, as you can see, we get nout. Another thing you could do is you could put an edge loop in, a swift loop here, and then you could kind of chamfer out the edge loop and then connect it to that. You need to do that before you start um, capping it, though. So I've left that a little bit late, unfortunately. Anyway, another option. Go through here like that, control select by vert, and then alt marquee select, and alt marquee deselect there as well, and we just get these ones. So, slightly quicker way of doing that. Now I'll round this because it will give it additional strength. And there. Okay, now. From this we have the ability to make it look like it is stronger, so I'm going to take that, because even though this isn't actually in any way mobile, um, we can make it look like it is. What I mean by that is we can make it look like it's got articulation, even when it doesn't. Okay, That's what the whole point of that piece there was in the first place. So I'm going to unhide the piston. Just one moment. Once I've had some delicious coffee. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, unhide all. Now then, that arm is really very, very, very big. Far too big, in fact. I'm going to have to scale this fellow down quite a lot. Just uh, get in there. Like so, bring that out. I reckon it needs to be about two thirds that size. There we go. Now, the problem I've got with that is, and I'll just uh, grab that one at it, but not that. I need this hide unselected. Alright, now, the arm's the right size more or less now, however, the end cap isn't, so we need to fix that. So let's get it into where the arm goes, more or less. You can see how large it needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those bits there. And then if I go into my left viewport, I can expand them. Until they are in the right place. It's about that size. Now, if I go to my top viewport, they're actually overlapping here, so I'm going to bring that back until they no longer do. There we 
go. So now if I grab this, and put it in there, and drop back to perspective. Now I'm going to get this, and I'll make myself a copy, so I'm just going to pick it up here. It's in more or less the right position, so that's good. Let's move it, so I'll reset it. And unhide all. And F3 and F4, so I can see the size of the arm there. That is the size that I wanted now, you see? That's much, much better. Okay, now I'm going to grab pieces what make the arm. So I need that, that and that, because it's only three bits. And I need the internal system as well, which is that one. And then over here, I accidentally selected too much stuff, so I'll grab this, deselect that, hide unselected. Right, now let's take this, move it out of the way a bit. Because I want to make three copies of it. Make sure they're copies. Three be enough? No, five. Okay, and there we go, just straighten them out a bit. So one's going to go on the top of this. Now, I want to be cautious with this one because the arm here is actually going to bend all the way down, you see, to about there. It's got a limitation on how much it bends. It can't bend too far down, but it can bend about that far. And then this arm can, like, move the rest, you see. So, I don't want to overflex and over contract the arm too much. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and move it 90 degrees in my top viewport. position is for it. Okay, that seems about right over here. Now as you can see, piston's too small. So I'm going to sort that out in just a moment. Let's come over here to this. And I can just grab the end of it do that. I'll just bring it right the way through. It doesn't really matter because it's kind of going inside this anyway. Just, you know, to about there. I'm going to bring this down. Actually, I think I'll bring this a little bit longer. Okay, so about there. So we've got these nice, big, long, strong pistons here. The idea is that I don't like seeing any machinery where I'm not convinced it can move. It drives me mad. So it's important to me that I look at it and I go, oh, yeah, that's how it's going to work. That makes more sense, you know? Don't worry that it's overlapping, because as soon as I move this down, it isn't anymore. OK, now I'm going to make sure I've got all the bits selected. like I have, top viewport and zoom. So I'm just going to drag this across the copy. Put that there. Put in the perspective and zoom. Okay, and I think I'm going to move these up a bit more. Like that, so the actuators are actually looking like they actuate. Next, at the bottom, I want to make some more. So, front of zoom, it's coming on these, and just marquee select them. And for this one, I'm just going to shift and drag like that. Obviously, we'll get two of them. And 
about there, isn't it? It's about right. I'm going to get these two. I'll just put them round about there. Okay, drop it in perspective. Now the bottom ones aren't close enough, so now they are. Okay, and yes, the model is becoming more complicated. No, I don't care. Okay, and what I can do is I can kind of space these apart a little bit more as well if I want, so I might grab this. I like the idea that they're braced somewhat, you see. One there. We can have some fun popping rivets all over this fella once we're done. One there. Okay, so that's two of them in. Next, let's have a look down here. This actuator here doesn't move, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically make it rigid. So, 90 degrees, top viewport and zoom. And, is that an actuator? Well, it's a piston, isn't it? I just like the word actuator, I think. I was talking nonsense now. Right, get this in. And, hit F4. I don't really want it to overlap, if I can help it. Right, let's have a look over here. Okay, that looks not bad. I'm just going to adjust the length of this, and so now I can drag it out Select that and go to local normal. Come it straight through like so. And you'll notice how just adding these on adds a wealth of detail to it that otherwise we wouldn't have. Top and zoom. So if I just select these and then deselect that. Put that there. Remove this. from viewport and zoom. I don't think I need those other ones, so I'm just going to delete them off. Okay, front and zoom. I can now go through this and then deselect that part. Okay. Now I'll grab the corner of this bit. Select those and just bring this down to maybe about there. Okay, you notice that gives us a much more solid appearance for our model, even though we've done very little to it. Alright, now, simple quick bit of linking then. And with these bits, I'm not even going to link them, I'm just going to probably attach them together. I don't really need to have these linked. Go over here, this one. Just attach them. Once they're attached, I'll delete the dummies. If I delete the dummies before, like you see, these will spring out of position. And they won't look very good. like it's all okay so go there just do a marquee select deselect those and delete there we go that's now a solid object now over here let's link these fellas up so here this object links to this this object links to this I'm going to get these right. This, 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 and this 
into the socket. Well, the other ones. We got here. This part here links onto that. Done. Okay, so that is the base weapon mount arm. Just about done now. And oh, sorry about that. The scratch of my arm. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to pose it yet because I need to add detail to it. And detail is a lot easier to add when it's in the initial build pose. So I'll show you that it's working now. Okay, so for example here, as you can see it's stretching in properly, which it should. And we can bring it right down by its side by doing that. And then with this one, let's see, I'll change it to local. See, so the arm's now working. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we'll start refining out the arm um, so that I can start putting a weapon onto it. So until then, I shall see you on the flip side. Bye-bye for now.